maybe a friend or a family member, maybe a classmate or a colleague. It could be the person who helped you in line at the grocery store. At the very least, well authentic. <laughs> that over the course of your life, you're gonna meet and interact with so many more autistic people. I'm autistic, and I've been immersed in this culture for years. Today, I'd like to give you a look into autistic culture by talking about nonverbal communication, verbal communication, and the concept of masking. Nonverbal communication in an autistic person is gonna look different than what it would like in a non-autistic person. Facial expressions might not match what the person is saying. So for example, they could be so excited and passionate about something and have a bored, disinterested, or even irritated expression throughout that course of the conversation. Or you have an entire conversation with an autistic person where their blank, neutral expression remains unchanging. Eye contact tends to be unconventional. When I talk about autistic eye contact, I'm sure a lot of you think about the autistic person who makes little to no eye contact. And that is very common. However, on another part of the spectrum is the autistic person that makes too much or too focused of eye contact. Hmm. Stimming is another part of nonverbal body language in autistic culture. Stimming means self-stimulatory behavior. This is a repetitive action that a person will do to regulate themselves. It could be to regulate through emotions such as distress or excitement, or uncomfortable sensory stimuli such as bright lights or loud noises. Stimming can present in many ways, such as flapping your hands, rocking back and forth, repeating a word or phrase, and many other things. And a big part of nonverbal communication is sensory tools. One type of sensory tool is a stim tool or stim toy. This is something you can use to stim more discreetly, excessively, or satisfyingly. And it could be a tangle, like this picture is using, is using, a fidget cube, a fidget spinner, slime, a squishy, anything like that. Another type of sensory tool helps to protect against uncomfortable sensory stimuli. This could be headphones to protect against sound, sunglasses to protect against light, or gloves to protect against sound. Another part of communication is verbal communication. Now, when it comes to verbal communication in the autistic community, directness is very valued. This is because social cues can be misunderstood, misinterpreted, or missed entirely. For example, let's say you are not autistic, and you have a roommate who is autistic. The sink in your apartment is filled with dirty dishes, <laughs> and you think it's your roommate's turn to do it because you did it last time. So you decide to ask them to do it. So you look to your roommate and you say, hey, the dishes in the sink have really been piling up haven't they? Your mate looks over at the sink, looks over at you, and says, yeah, they have them, and goes back to what they were doing without any indication that they were going to do the dishes. I'm going to explain what just happened here using this communication model. <laughs> Use the source encoded your message. When you encoded your message, you used an implicit request. You did not explicitly say what you wanted, but because of social cues, subtlety, and implying what you wanted, you expected your autistic roommate to understand what you were asking. So you send the source to the channel, just verbally asking, and when your autistic roommate decoded it, they missed that impl implicit message because you didn't directly say it. So when they decoded this message, they found a statement of fact that yeah, they just had been packed enough. And they thought that's all that you were saying. This type of misunderstanding can cause so much frustration and conflict. So the next time you want your autistic roommate to do the dishes, just ask them to do the dishes. <laughs> <laughs> According to verywellhealth.com, about 25 to 30% of autistic adults are nonverbal or minimally verbal. This means they speak about 30 words or less. In recent years, there's been a movement to replace the term nonverbal with non-speaking. This is because there are ways to be verbal without speaking. One of those ways is with an AAC device. AAC stands for Alternative and Augmentative Communication. This is a fancy way of saying communicating without speaking. And an AAC device helps you do just that. It is typically an iPad or a tablet of some kind, and this tablet will have a program downloaded onto it. And it could look something like this. There will be keys that have symbols, icons, words, pictures, something that the person can use to select these items to craft a phrase or sentence and communicate their message. Speechpathologygraduateprograms.org shows us a list of the top 10 AAC devices. These range in price from $175 to as much as $7,000. So if a person is willing to spend this much on a communication tool, you can, you can guess that they probably need it. So next time you're in public and see someone with a tablet where you don't think they should have one, take a second to think that might be their way of communicating. And expecting them to leave it at home would be like me expecting you to leave your ability to speak at home. <laughs> the last thing I'd like to talk to you today is the concept of masking. Psychcentral.com defines masking as a way to, quote, disguise or suppress specific autism traits, unquote. This is a way for an autistic person to adapt to a non-autistic environment. 
This could be a way to fit in with peers and avoid ostracization, or it could be a safety mechanism against harassment and discrimination. The best way to illustrate what masking is is to use an example, and I'll be using one from my own life. Typically, I resent a lot of the traits we've talked about in this speech. My eye contact isn't always right. My tone of voice and facial expressions can sometimes be mismatched. Social cues go right over my head, and I use a lot of sensory tools, and I stim. But if I'm at a work event where I have to work with the public, I can't do any of that, so I mask. This starts by shedding every sensory tool that I use, no matter how much I know I'm going to need it. I keep my hands in a practice position to make sure that they don't get away from me and start stimming. I make eye contact with whoever I'm speaking to, no matter how uncomfortable that makes me. I have a series of scripted phrases in response to questions I know I'm going to get to make sure I don't slip up and miss a social cue. And I deliver these phrases with a smile and expression I have practiced in the mirror for days before. <laughs> and this isn't just something I use for big events. It's a daily occurrence. In fact, I've been doing it since we walked into this room today. <laughs> today, I'll give you a closer look into autistic culture by talking to you about nonverbal communication, verbal communication, and the concept of masking. I hope you walk away from this today with a greater understanding, respect, and appreciation for autistic culture. Thank you.